Hello, dear ones. It is so good to gather with you on this week after we have lived into the results of this election. I don't know about you, but I found these days to be full of tension and just uh, a difficult waiting as we move, uh, as we live into this theme of grace and then prepare to move into the theme of waiting, which is our December theme. I want to share a quote from an article that was sent to me by a colleague that was published in the Atlantic over a year ago, written by Melvin Ingleby. And it begins this way. Consider the following scenario. You are an opposition leader in a deeply divided nation. Against all odds, you narrowly win a local election against a ruling party that controls the public space and censors the media, becoming mayor of the country's largest city. Under government pressure, however, the authorities ruled that the vote was rigged, deposing you from office. What do you do? And this is the question that this journalist poses in the Atlantic. He was writing about the dilemma in Istanbul facing uh, Ikram Imamul, who was the mayor. He had, they claimed it, the election had been rigged because Erdogan, Erdogan's the leader of Turkey, the president of Turkey, chosen candidate, the candidate of the Justice and Development Party, of which Erdogan heads, ha had been their candidate, and that candidate had lost. But they said that the election had been rigged. So they did a recount. They tried to prove that it had been rigged, and then another election was called. Now, the opposition was furious because it was clear that they had won. And there was some, actually there wasn't just some, there was great fear that violence was going to erupt in the streets of Istanbul. So imagine how tense things were. Somewhat kind of how we had imagined if violence had erupted on the streets of the US, which they didn't. I, I, post-election. They did not erupt post-election. They erupted earlier. So in solidarity with those people and our people who stood up in the uprising, I continue with this story. This opposition candidate took to the streets, met with his followers, and said, we are not going to protest. What I want you to do is I want you to reach out to people who did not vote like you did, I want you to give them a hug and model a kind of loving regard. And his followers did just that, surprising the entire city of Istanbul. They engaged in conversation with people who had differing opinions and beliefs. And the candidate himself went to mosques and community centers and he said, we are going to break down the walls of hatred, answering it brick by brick with radical love. He employed a different kind of strategy and encouraged his followers to do the same. And slowly what happened is the city was transformed. Neighbors started talking to neighbors. People started being kinder to one another. I share this story with you as I speak in solidarity with the people who are most harmed and marginalized by the policies of the outgoing party in, in our presidency. But I also do so encouraging you, is there a way that we can bravely move into a crack created by this election where we can create bridges and reach out to people who did not vote as we did, who may not have voted at all, and see if in, a, in an ethic of regard, mutual respect, and even radical love, if we can engage in conversation and change the nature of the civil discourse in our country. We need to start loving and listening 
and just being present to those who we experience as the other. May it be so, and amen.